We've asked one student, though, to, uh, to speak to us uh, for a few moments this evening, and uh, I think you're going to find his topic very interesting. Jonathan Belding is, the, uh, is in the class of 2009 as well. He's here with his wife and, uh, and with their daughter, and we look forward to, uh, to your remarks. Jonathan. Well, in the grand, they asked me to talk to you about something for a few minutes here, and in the grand tradition of other Amici's that have gone before me, I decided to talk about my child, because it's probably the most interesting thing about me. That's Eve. Uh, and one of the interesting things that we did with her was the way we brought her into the world. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about water birth. I don't know if anyone knows anything about it. Um, but it's basically the baby is born in the water and the woman labors in the water and it's been around for thousands of years we don't really know there's no documentation of, of this as far as we can tell but um, it, many cultures including the Egyptians the Minoans of Crete and the Chumash Indians of Central California have depictions of this on murals and that sort of thing it's gained wider acceptance though in the Western world with the work of several obstetricians uh, most notably there were French doctors Michael Odent and Frederick Laboyer who did some uh, pivotal research in this around the 60s and the 70s, um, documenting most importantly at safety as, as a, you know the first thing you hear when someone says water birth, well, don't do that. <laughs> but uh, they did some work on that, and with their with their help, water birth is now offered at over 300 hospitals in the U.S. One of them being UH, and uh, there's documented now cases of about 150,000 worldwide. Although I'm sure there's much more uh, than that uh, that, are not, that have not been documented. There has also, of course, been considerable research into the safety and benefits of this option. So I've had to censor this a little bit, but this is my wife. Uh, uh, and she is in the tub. And one of the, the best things about water birth and the thing that I think is the best proponent of it is that um, my daughter was actually 9'9 nine, nine, uh, and 21 inches. And my wife labored for 23 hours naturally with no epidural and came out perfectly. So just had to show that and give my wife a little credit for that one. Uh, <laughs> thank you. But so it's, it's a natural way to limit uh, pain other than epidurals. Uh, and some of the things they found, Dr. Odent and other people like uh, him, reduces sensory stimulation of the body, which in turn reduces the stress hormone levels. The water actually also counteracts the force of gravity and the pressure against the back that a lot of women go feel. I haven't experienced it myself, but I've been told. Uh, relaxation also causes the uterus to contract more effectively. There's also been documented less tearing and, less, and a zero need for episiotomy in water birth literature. And the national average of cesareans, I don't know if anyone's uh, interested in that sort of thing, but it's, it's about one third now, and this is not a minor surgery. Uh, and in the midwife practice here that we use at UH, their cesarean rate is 12.5%, and that's including their high-risk patients. So it definitely decreases that. It also has been shown to increase cardiac function with the increased venous return to the heart. There's also benefits to the baby. Birth is not just a strenuous experience for the, uh, for the mother. It can be strenuous on the baby, and in a properly heated, uh, warm bath, it creates an intrauterine-like environment, reduces stress, softens light. Uh, decreases early noise exposure, and the baby, they just have noticed that it comes out a little more relaxed, might be the word you want to hear, and uh, it, they tend to be a little more alert, which is interesting. This is my daughter coming out. You, you'll notice that most of the reason I did this presentation is to show pictures of my daughter. So. <laughs> Some of the frequently asked questions, uh, how does the baby breathe? Um, some people might already know this, but baby, the, the baby stops breathing during labor because of a rise in prostaglandin. And it does not actually breathe until it senses uh, around uh, its skin, around its nose, uh, the air. So as it comes out in the water, it just continues to think that it's in the birth canal. And then it comes up and you clamp the umbilical cord and uh, it breathes normally like any other uh, normally birthed baby. Uh, it was a little scary for me though, I'd, I had uh, attended several deliveries and water babies tend to wait a little while to breathe and so that 30 seconds to a minute was a little bit longer than I was comfortable with but I relaxed, the midwife was very calm so that was nice. Uh, and also it's been shown to be very safe, uh, there's a 1.2 per thousand mortality in a British study as compared to four so it's, there's no increased rate of infection or anything like that. So you can see that water babies often come out with their eyes open which was a really cool experience for us and uh, something you're never going to forget. And we, our uh, doula was kind enough to take that picture so we could remember it. So uh, one of the nice things about University, Hosp University Hospital is that they offer this, uh, this service through a midwife practice uh, with three midwives that attend water births. 
It's one of the only uh, centers that does water birth in Northeast Ohio, though, which I thought was a nice thing. And uh, they have some protocols for it, though. It, it needs to be low-risk mothers with specific standards. Um, they're allowed to attempt to birth in the tub. There's some further reading on this if anybody's interested. Um, as I said, Michael O'Dent was one of the uh, premier people talking about this. He's a, an obstetrician from France. And then just a couple pictures, because I like showing pictures. <laughs> So we started early on the med school path. She's watching some videos and doing some work. That's her with her best friend, Violet. And that's her during that fun Cleveland weather. Yeah, that's you. As you can see, you've probably seen her running around. So on a serious note, though, um, none of this would be possible without the, uh, your contribution. I don't think I ever would have come the case. And uh, I did not only have a daughter, I'm on the admissions committee, and I got a master's in anatomy. And I, and I don't think any of that would have been possible without the, the contribution that you make. So. Um, speak for myself, but also probably other scholars. It, it really, uh, thank you so much for helping us out coming to medical school. So that's it. Thanks.